the Buckhead and Upshur. Coach Marsh, I talked to you last year. Congratulations on being back in the state tournament. Well, thank you, Fred. We're really glad to be back again. I was hoping we could get here again and maybe hope to do a little better than we did last year. If I remember correctly, you had an awful lot of talent returning, especially a young man by the name of Lynn Witcher. Uh, how's Lynn doing for you this year? And then let's talk a little bit about the Buccaneers also. I understand you lost your first ball game of the season, and you haven't lost since then. Well, uh, Lynn's been our... Uh, our leader all year, Fred. He's averaging 18.2 points a game and is highly recruited by a lot of colleges. And he's a real fine prospect and a real fine boy. And he was back, of course, along with Scott McDaniels, who was our, our point guard last year. And we had a couple other kids that were on the bench who uh, are back also. But basically, we have two, two starters returning from that team that was here last year. Okay. Well, uh, I did, like I say, you did lose your first game of the season, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And now you've won since then, what, 22 straight? How does it feel coming into the tournament with the best record among the AAA teams? And then uh, how about the Princeton Tigers, the team you have to face here tonight? Okay, well, you, you try to win every game, of course. We did lose our first ball game and, and didn't play very well against a pretty good Morgantown ball club. But we've been, been on, the, on the beam ever since and been lucky enough to pull out some close ones. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of luck, I think, rides in the thing. You've got to play well every night. It's very difficult. But, of course, at this point in time, by the record, you know, what you've accomplished in the past really means nothing because it's a, it's a start all over with tournaments. And if you have a bad night, you're out of it and gone. So uh, we were real pleased with that accomplishment. We can't uh, rest on those laurels because, uh, as I say, that, that's all behind us now. We've got to look ahead to the, the teams we're playing right now. And, of course, we're out of our section or out of the region on the state against Princeton. And I noticed that Princeton has been playing well at the end of the season here. Most of the games that they had lost five altogether were early in the season. And so they're playing real good basketball. And there's the defending state champs. I'm sure they've got a lot of tournament savvy. And they've got Jimmy Miller back and, and uh, Jeff Eads and some other people there. So, you know, Princeton is a highly, uh, highly respected ball club by not only us, but I think by everybody else in the tournament field. Well, Coach March, March, the best of luck to you tonight in the game against Princeton. We'll be back in 60 seconds with more pregame discussion. The Princeton Tigers, coached by Coach Ralph Ball, 18-5 and five on the season, the defending Class AAA champs. And, Ralph, I know after you lost a man of the caliber of Williams from last year, a lot of people kind of wrote Princeton off, and here you are again. How, how about this team that you've got this year? Well, these kids have really developed this year. They, they've come on. We we had one boy back out of the top seven, and they put it together after about the first four or five games, and they played real good basketball. How do you evaluate this team, maybe comparing it to last year's team? Well, we've got the uh, very similar. We've got a good team by them. So all probably, we're not probably stronger rebounding ball team, but we're probably better uh, offensive ball team and shoot better overall. What do you know about Buchanan Upshur? One of the outstanding teams in the tournament, I feel sure, and they're very big and very strong and seem to be a top de defensive ball team. Uh, what do you what do you see as the key? What what does what do the Princeton Tigers have to do in order to beat Buchanan up here? Well, we've got to uh, above all, we've got to uh, do some rebounding. Even though they're going to be much bigger than we are, I think the boards are going to be a big factor. And we've got to use our quickness to get a few rebounds and, and try to uh, uh, do as much running as possible. We're not a really run and gun team, but uh, I think we've got to run some. How many of your team are you going to have back for next season? Well, we're starting four juniors and one sophomore right now. We've got two seniors that come off the bench for us. So basically the entire team will be back again next year. Right. All right, I want to thank you for talking with us and wish you the very best of luck in the state tournament. This has been the pregame show of the West Virginia State High School Basketball Tournament from the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown. We'll be back in 60. Hello again, everyone, from the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown. I'm Jack Fleming, along with Rod Odell and Fred Persinger. We have more action in the AAA division of the State High School Basketball Tournament. The 67th annual event is now in full swing, and tonight's final game will round out the semifinals in AAA competition. In this fall game, Buchanan Upshur, coached by Jim Marsh, with a record of 22-1, the champions of the Big Ten Conference, will tackle the defending state champions, the Princeton Tigers, coached by Ralph Ball, with a record of 18-5. And, and it appears to be a good matchup. Very interesting thing about these ball clubs. Princeton, the defending state champion, last won the title in 1948 before last year, has a total of two titles. But Cannon Upshur has won the state title twice. But in 1921 and 1922, Princeton lost to Wheeling 46-45 in the 1943 title game. 
But Janet Upshur last year lost to Logan 61-60 in the quarterfinals. And that was BU's first tournament visit since 1952. But Janet Upshur was a runner-up in 1918 and 1919. So a lot of history goes into to tonight's meeting. And there is just a touch of pathos as you look down the bench while the Princeton club was warming up. A single kid sitting at the end of the bench in his street clothes with clutches. His name, Bill Harmon, a 6'2 senior starter. About two weeks ago, came up with a broken foot and is out for the tournament. And he sat there and watched them and watched the cheerleaders sending the uh, followers through their paces. And you can read his face. And he was saying to himself, I'd like to be out there for Princeton tonight. At any rate, we're going to have ourselves a ball game. The Tigers and the Bucks. And we'll get around to the starting lineups. We're going to take a look at these two ball clubs a little more closely. First of all, when you talk about Big Ten basketball, you're looking at a number of different factors. You're looking at one time Morgantown having some dominance, another time Elkins having some dominance, another time Washington Irving having some dominance, West Fairmont had its day. All down through the Big Ten conference, you've had this dominance. But Cannon Upshur, under Jim Marsh, is marking itself as a basketball power within that conference. But Cannon has been known in recent years as a football power in the state. The Princeton Tigers, as I mentioned, have a great basketball tradition that goes back, well, it could go back beyond this man, but it goes back at least to Quentin Barnett, a man who is upstairs in the press room tonight. I haven't seen him for a long time. He came here to the university left the university and uh, went into the East to work and has been back in Princeton about six years. One of the truly fine gentlemen in sport. So you come up on some great people who have helped to build these programs. And when I think of Princeton, I have to think of a fellow named Cards Hogue, who is now gone from uh, this earth, but a man who gave so much to the Princeton program and looked after so many Princeton athletes, bringing them to the tournament when their team hadn't made it, uh, taking them to a fellowship Christian athletes uh, camp, Carnes Hogue and what a great man he was in Princeton Athletics. And then going down to Buchanan, guy new in the service overseas, uh, affiliated with uh, West Virginia Wesleyan, Bill Hicks. There have been a lot of folks in both of these towns that over the years uh, have been acquaintances, have meant something either athletically or otherwise. So I look at the matchup and I think personally, I like it. And we're looking at some outstanding basketball players, some outstanding students. Uh, on one side, Buchanan Upshur, Joe Abel, an A student. He'll come to West Virginia in the fall in free medicine. Lynn Wilcher, an A student, heavily recruited. He'll major in accounting. We have Scott McDaniels, an outstanding student. For Princeton, Jeff St. Clair, an A student. Jimmy Miller, an A and B student. So we've got some quality people on both sides to go along with the fact that we've got outstanding basketball players. Well, the tip-off and the announcement of the starting lineup going to follow this message from our state network sponsor, the Gale Catlett Basketball Camp. I've got some inter interesting information for you tonight because I've managed to get together a group of autographed pictures of WBU head basketball coach Gail Catlett, and we'd like to give them to the first 50 kids between 8 and 18 years of age requesting a free color brochure describing the 1980 Gale Catlett Basketball Camp. Keep in mind, it starts June 15th with three weeks for boys and one for girls. A trained staff of coaches and counselors offers super instruction, lots of fun-filled activities, 24-hour supervision, and free gifts for each camper. So we invite you to be among the first 50 to reply and get a personally autographed picture of the Big Cat, Gail Catlin. Send your name and address to me. Now, I'd like you to address it, Jack Cat, care of basketball office, P.O. Box 877, Morgantown, West Virginia, the zip, 26505. Rod O'Dell is covering almost 60 high school basketball games down in the southern part of the state, all across the state from Charleston to Bluefield. I know that you've had an opportunity to watch Princeton. And if you could, in a nutshell, summarize how this club has changed without Alan Williams, who now is at Duke University. Well, basically, they changed in the fact that uh, the big man in the middle, they still go to him. The big man this year is the man they were using for forward last year. Uh, the difference being that he, he has, a, I think, a, a better touch than Alan Williams, but not nearly so physical. He does not have the weight or the bulk of Alan Williams, and it's more of a finesse game on the inside. 
You, you talk about losing Alan Williams. They also le- lost a couple of uh, young men that were playing at forward and in watching them play against the Woodrow Wilson Flying Eagles last year. Williams was not the dominating factor, such as the other forwards were uh, in, in beating uh, Beckley. We watched them play four times this year. They're as good a ball club, uh, I feel, as they were last year. The, the big man on the inside is not the dominant factor due to the fact, though, that it's not it's not physical uh, strength that's doing it. More of a finesse move by, by Jimmy Miller. He's more of a finesse player. I'd say that uh, that's a pretty good summary. Well, it wasn't in a nutshell, but the nutshells are here in front of me, you see. <laughs> the two coaches have been introduced. Ralph Ball, the veteran at Princeton, and Jim Marsh of Buchanan Upshur. The Bucks have won 22 and lost one. That's an interesting story because that one defeat came in the opening game of the season. Buchanan lost to Morgantown 49 to 46. Since that time, BU has won 22 consecutive games. The sectional tournament play, defeating Rose County 83 to 35. Defeating Elkin, 71 to 25. In the regional, winning over Greenbrier East, 45 to 32. Now this is the best record of any Buchanan Upshur team ever, 22 and one. In addition to winning their third consecutive sectional titles and second consecutive regional titles, the Bucks won the 13 member AAA Big Ten Conference Championship with a 19 and one record. Jim Marsh was named Big Ten Coach of the Year for 1980. The Bucks won the Big Ten in 1973 with an 18-2 record. BU was defeated that year in the regional by Greenbrier East and thus denied a state tournament appearance. The Bucks were 20-3 and three overall back in 1973. So this is the third time in 16 years of coaching that Jim Marsh has brought his team to the state tournament. For the last two years, Coach Marsh's Webster Springs team appeared in 1966, losing to Huntington Benson, which eventually became the double-A champion. Now, Jim Marsh is in his ninth year at BU. Princeton, on the other hand, we told you was coming off a championship last year. So the defending state champions in AAA competition are out to do it again. They would like to have back-to-back AAA championships, just as Logan did in 1977 and 78, just as Charleston did in 1973 and 74. Let's look at the starting lineup. McKenna Upshur, listed as the home club, wearing its white uniform with pin stripes. Same type of stripes as worn by the New York Yankees. Starting Joe Abel, 6'5", 165, a senior, averaging 12.2 per game. Lynn Wilcher, 6'5", 185, a senior, averaging 18.2. Abel averages 7.7 rebounds. Wilcher averages 10.8 boards. At center, at all Big Ten Conference and second team All-State end in football, Rob Bennett, 6'5", 210, a junior, and he is averaging 13.8, rebounding at an 8.7 clip. And along the back line, Scott McDaniels at 6'1", 170, a senior, averaging 8 points. Jim Critchfield, a 5'11", 155-pound junior, averaging 2.6. Princeton, wearing his road blue uniform, starting James DeWitt at 6'2", 145, a sophomore, averaging 12.5. Stephon Murray at 6'3", 165, a junior, averaging 4.5. Jimmy Miller, 6'7", 175-pound junior, averaging 20 points per game. Mike Eads, E-A-D-E-S. Six feet, 155, a junior, averaging 14.7. And Jeff St. Clair, 5'8", 138, junior, averaging 8.5. Those pinstripe warm-ups come off, and we find Buchanan Upshur with white uniforms and blue numerals. So we've got exactly the opposite colors, the same shade and everything. Buchanan in white with blue numerals, and Princeton in blue with white numerals. Ready to go. At the Coliseum in Morgantown, Jimmy Miller, tall and slender at 6'7", shakes hands, steps in against Rob Bennett, a little stock here at 6'5", 210. They'll jump. Princeton will go to the left. BU will go to the right. And they're ready to throw it up in the final quarterfinal game of the AAA. And the tap goes to Princeton, controlled by Mike E. He skims the ball to Jeff St. Clair, and St. Clair sets it up. They're on the attack to the wing to Eads. Against the 2 3 zone defense into the middle of it. He goes to Miller. Turn around shot. No good at the rebound. Cleared out of there by Joe Abel. Abel gives the outlet pass to Critchfield. And here they come left to right on the attack. 
Princeton in a 2-3 zone. Buchanan goes into the corner to Abel. Back outside on the point to Critchfield and around to the right wing to Wilcher. They work it carefully around for the left side. The long shot is taken over there by Scott McDaniels. No good on the rebound. We have a whistle. So we go into the foul circle for a jump ball. And that puts Joe Abel in there against Jimmy Miller. Abel 6'5", Miller 6'7". And Miller taps it easily over to the near side. Chased down by Jeff St. Clair, the Tigers. Princeton back on the attack. Right to left, coming into the front court against the zone defensive, two, three zones, going to the right wing, and they move the ball over to the wind, around to the left side, Weeds gets the long shot, high off the rim, looking at the rebound, cleared out of there, pulled down by Rob Bennett from the cannon, up here, down the floor, they come, Scott McDaniels into the front court, he travels, tried to put on the brakes, couldn't do it, and they got away from him. No score in the ball game. And we've gone through almost a minute of the action. Here is St. Clair, into the front court carefully, not too tall, red-haired chop. Start to say a red-haired child, a red-haired young man. Look at this. Over to Eads. He drives, tries to bounce it off. It's knocked down. Coming out with the ball for Buchanan. Tim Critchfield travels. Might be sitting here with you two old guys that would give me the inclination to call a high school kid a child. A lot of age around me. Got Princeton putting it in play to the right side. Long shot. James DeWitt. No good in the rebound. Tapped around. It's in the air. Volleyball catch made. Rob Bennett with the ball. Down the floor comes to Scott McDaniels. Over the midcourt line. Into the front court angles. Off to the left side. Looks at the 2-3 zone. Moves it to Critchfield. Around to the right side. Wilcher. Long shot. Good. Angle right. 18 feet. Lynn Wilcher. But Kevin Upshur leading. 2 to nothing. Princeton back on the attack. St. Clair is in the front court. St. Clair goes to the right wing to Mike Eads. Now they're coming back out to the point, but it's kicked away by Tim Critchfield. And it is out of play. Out of bounds. Inbounds play for Mike Keith. Deep back to St. Clair. St. Clair into the top of the key. Bouncer over to the left wing. Take up a James DeWitt. Back again to St. Clair. Back to DeWitt on the left side of the zone. He fires angle left. No good in the rebound. Trim by Joe Abel. BU. Outlet goes to Critchfield. Critchfield up over the midcourt line. Handles it with the right hand. Coming into the top of the key. Pass to the left wing. Taken by McDaniels. Back on around the horn to the right side. Wilcher with the ball. Feeds it down inside. They get the turnaround shot by Rob Bennett. He hits it. Eight foot range. Right side of the lane. On the turnaround. Four to nothing. In favor of the Bucks. Jeff St. Clair on the attack for the Tigers. Bounce pass to the left side to Eads. Back to St. Clair. Over to the right to do it. He gets a 15 footer up in the air off the inside of the rim. Takes his own rebound. Lays up the shot. No good, but he was fouled. And the foul is called on Rob Bennett. Number one against Bennett. First foul of the ball game. And to the line for Princeton will go James DeWitt. DeWitt will have two shots. Averaging 12.5 per game. A sophomore at 6'2", 145. Right hand shot up there and good. You talk about Princeton, you've also got to think of... Rod Storm, the great all-stater, all-everything, all-American that came out, went on to play in pro ball, now general manager of the Chicago Bulls. Here's the free throw, try to get in the rebound, taken by Jimmy Miller. Miller goes to the basket, and it's fouled by Lynn Wilcher. Shot doesn't drop. Jimmy Miller, junior, averaging 20 points per game. We'll try two. Four to one ball game as DeWitt made the first of two. And now Miller stands in at the line. 6'7", 175 pounds. Flips it up with the right hand, it's good. Four to two in favor of Buchanan Upshur. Jimmy Miller at the line for the Princeton Tigers. With the right hand, four at height, up, arches in, good. And the score is four to three. Now full court pressure from Princeton. They trap in the backcourt. And Buchanan Upshur moves against it up the floor to Bennett. Then down the middle, they come to McDaniels. He fires from them to Keno. Get another rebound, slap down and out of bounds. And the inside official looks to the outside official, and he says, out of bounds to Buchanan. Inbound play will be made for Buchanan by Scott McGangs. And he gets it in the round. Then it fires up a one-hander. It's good from the right side. Six to three. Buchanan leading. Back on the attack. St. Clair in the front court to the right wing to James DeWitt. He's toward the corner now. Back out around the heart. It comes to the left side. Eads tries an 18-footer. Good angle left. Mike Eads hitting for Princeton. Six to five. B.U. in the lead by one. Buchanan led four to nothing. Here they come on the attack. Into the front court. Critchfield handles it with the left hand on the dribble. Over to McDaniel. And then into the middle of Bennett. Bennett gets the shot away from 16. They'll get in the rebound. Picked off by Stephon Murray. Princeton back on the attack. Jeff St. Clair cutting over the 10-second line. Approaching the top of the key. The pass comes left to Mike Eads. Eads into the lane. One hands it up. Blocked beautifully by Joe Abel. Buchanan with the ball. Three on two. Four on two. Here they come to the foul line. Jump shot. Scott McDaniel hits it for Buchanan. They got the great rejection and the basketball. Eight to five in favor of Buchanan. 
Now they bend that back line into a 2 1 2, but basically it's a 2 3. Flat nose out front. Over to the right wing now. The ball goes to the win. He fires from over there off the back of the rim. It's tapped up by Jimmy Miller. No good. And the rebound off the floor. Wilshire with the ball. Down the floor to Critchfield. Critchfield rounding into the key. Feeds the left off the fingertips of Joe Abel and out of bounds. Princeton will get it back on the turnover. You got a little bit of ability to run here tonight. I mean, like they take off like a pack of horses and they go from one end to the other. I love it. 2-3 zone for Buchanan. Ball goes into Miller. Miller right side, baseline, jump shot, no good. Rebound picked off in there by Eads. Follow up shot, good to the left side. Miller was heavily guarded on his shot. He missed it. Eads got the rebound, put it up on the left side. They played Andy over for two. Eight to seven in favor of Buchanan. In the front court to the right wing, Wiltshire. Back out on the point to Critchfield around to the left side. The ball moved to McDaniels around the 2 3 zone. It comes around to Wiltshire. Fires the shot, an air ball, take it out of the air by Dillon. Down the floor, they go to Eads. He's grabbing it on the right side. They pick him up. He shoots from 14. No! Good! And the rebound tapped around, comes outside. Buchanan has it. The traveling call on Scott McDaniels. Princeton gets it back. 3.36 to play in the first period at the WVU Coliseum on the campus of West Virginia University. The last quarterfinal game of the 1980 AAA tournament. Princeton with the ball. The defending champions, Jeff St. Clair, top of the key, hit. Quick one-hander by Jeff St. Clair, and Princeton has the lead for the first time. 9-8. 3 to play in the first quarter. Critchfield's in the front court. Critchfield over to the left side to McDaniels. Back to Critchfield around to the right to come to Wilshire. Knocked away for Wilshire, and the foul called on the play. Charge to Jeff St. Clair. St. Clair committed the foul. Number one on St. Clair. That is going to be the second team foul on the Tigers. Inbounds play comes near side. Scott McDaniels gets it into Tim Critchfield, the junior, advancing on the dribble down into the key. 16 foot jumper. Two logs. Rebound. Jimmy Miller. Miller turns it over to St. Clair. St. Clair. Grab the rather casually medium speed coming into the front court, approaches the zone. The pass goes right to DeWitt. DeWitt cuts in for the lane. Ten foot jumper banks it in. Jim DeWitt. 11 to 8 in favor of Princeton. Princeton falls back into its 2 3 zone, and here comes Critchfield into the front court for the buck. Top of the key. Pass goes left over to McDaniels, down to the left corner, now to Wavell. Back outside they come, taking the ball to Wiltshire, now to the right corner, but a shot try by McDaniels, and it's no good, and we have a whistle underneath. Foul down under the basket. It's going to be charged to James DeWitt. That will be his first. Jeff St. Clair hanging in the ball game. We had a change out here. Let me pick it up for you in just a moment. McCannon gets the ball to Wiltshire. Wiltshire fires from the right side. No good, but from the lane in front, it is followed up. It was tapped away from the basket, and now followed up again. They miss again, and it is out of bounds. In there somewhere, a hand went up and knocked it away, and the Buchanan bench came up. They wanted goaltending, but the officials said no. So the ball is out of bounds to Buchanan, and Coach Jim Marsh just fell off his chair. Into the right corner, they pass it. Wiltshire fires and hits. They got it back. 11 to 10. Coach Marsh just fell off his chair and hopped right back up. He is upset. All right, we've got Princeton with a basketball, and we have uh, no change in that lineup. Thought I saw somebody ready to report into the ball game. I see him now for Buchanan, and we'll pick him up for you in just a moment. Johnny Poundstone is in there. Here we've got a close in jump layup try by Jimmy Miller. It failed because he was closely guarded by Rob Bennett. And the foul is called on Bennett, his second. Jimmy Miller will go to the line for two shots. Jimmy Miller, who in the classroom is a student in the A and B range, does a good job in there at the line, and he rolls it over the front of the rim. Good. And the score is 12 to 10. So as we told you, John Poundstone, a 5'9", 170-pound junior on the floor now for Buchanan. Jimmy Miller hits again. He's 4 for 4 at the foul line, 13 to 10. In favor of Princeton, full court pressure now for the Tigers. Inbounds by to Lynn Wiltshire. Up the board comes to Rob Bennett, brings it down, out to the left of the key. Pass comes back outside again to Scott McDaniels and gives it over to Poundstone, now to McDaniels. Round to the right side, to Lynn Wiltshire. Now to get it down inside, it's knocked away and saved. Back out near the center line, take it over the center line by Poundstone. So he violated the center line, and the ball goes back to Princeton. James DeWitt will be the inbounder on the far side of the floor for the Tigers. And he brings it into Jeff St. Clair. St. Clair 
Careful out of the right side. Goes to the right corner with the pass. Now it comes into Jimmy Miller. Jimmy Miller double team gets the shot up off the corner of the board out of bounds to McCannon. Bad shot for Miller. He was heavily guarded down at the baseline. He tried to hit that sharp angle into the basket, got the corner of the board. Full court pickup by Princeton on defense. Inbounds play to Wilcher. His pass on the floor. Deflected out of bounds and goes out to Princeton. Last touching by Buchanan. James DeWitt will make the inbounds play for the Tigers. Pass comes to Jeff St. Clair. St. Clair puts it on the floor. The dribble coming out of the right side of the team. The pass back out to Mike Eves. Glances up at the clock. They'll run some time off. They lead 13 to 10. Back over to St. Clair. He yo-yos the ball out near the center circle. The pass to the right wing to Eves. Down into the right corner goes to DeWitt. DeWitt one bounce. Back again to Eves. Eves again to St. Clair. Buckhannon holding to the 2-3 zone. The ball goes into Miller. They collapse on him. And the foul is called. Miller got the ball. Foul is called on Rob Bennett. That will be his third. Jimmy Miller will go to the line. Chet Wamsley coming off the bench to relieve Bennett. Wamsley, a 6'3", 170-pound senior. We're getting a timeout of the ball game with 104 to play in the first quarter. The score, Princeton, 13. Buckhannon up your 10. At West Virginia University for this tournament, Sam Kagris, the basketball trainer, uh, the basketball trainer, John Spiker, who directs the training program at the university. Three student trainers on hand for each session, doing a great job back there, looking after not only the players but the cheerleaders, anybody who needs help. All right, put in play by Princeton, stolen away by Buchanan, coming over the ball, Big Daniels, down over the midcourt line and into the front court. Fifty-two seconds. Now they'll run off a little time. Out on the point, the operator is John Poundstone. Get the pass down to Joe Abel. Turn around, shot left side of the lane is no good. And on the rebound, a foul has been called against Princeton. Charge this one now to Stephon Murray. Stephon Murray. Inbound play will come from James DeWitt for Buchanan at the baseline. In it comes to Poundstone. Over to the left side to Wiltshire. Gets his shot away, 15 footer. No good in the rebound. Stephon Murray. Gives the ball to Eads. Eads up the floor to St. Clair. Princeton with 35 seconds remaining in the first quarter as the basketball and a three-point lead. Buchanan spreads out a 2-3 zone to meet them at the top of the key. They'd like to keep them from getting that inside shot. Now, Princeton posts Jimmy Miller out high. Clock down to 19. St. Clair holding the ball. He gets a challenge. Brings it over to Eads. Back out again to St. Clair. Now they're down to 10. They go into their motion. Over to DeWitt. DeWitt coming in, driving down to the baseline. Jump shot, baseline right, he hits it. That was a beauty. 15 to 10. But get him with a long desperation pass to no avail. We are at the end of the first quarter of the ball game. And what a first quarter it has been. We'll return after these messages from the State Tournament Network sponsors. This is Jack Fleming at the WBU Coliseum in Morgantown. Boy, we've had some action. We had a triple overtime this afternoon, you wouldn't believe. Wheeling Park finally defeating South Charleston by two points. It was a great game. Jump ball, Jimmy Miller taps, but Buchanan gets the ball. Lynn Wilcher controlled it, gets it down the floor for a close in layup drive by Joe Abel. That misfire, but it was tapped in. Walmsley gets the tap in, and he just came into the ball game. A 6'3 senior, 170 pounder, Chet Walmsley. 15 to 12. Princeton on the attack, and a pass to the right wing tapped out of bounds. The Tigers are moving toward our left here at the Coliseum. Inbounds play Eves to St. Clair. Against the 1-3-1 one, one zone now virtually, and we'll see how they shift it. Over in the corner, we get a foul call, and a foul call against Princeton. Here comes the signal, Jimmy Miller charge with the foul. Number one on Jimmy. Miller comes into the tournament with a 20-point average. Handling the ball for Buchanan up to John Townstone into the top of the key. He beats over to the right side, gets to the Wilshire, back out to Poundstone. Cuts the 16, jump shot, high off the rim, hangs up there, drops, no good in the rebound. Princeton on the attack, they went with the ball. Travels over the midcourt line. When I say travel, I mean on the dribble. He did not commit a violation. He's over the midcourt line into the attack zone. Jeff St. Clair takes the ball from him on the point, and they look at a 1-3-1 one, one zone, and Joe Abel is back under the basket. Now the trouble they're trying to do is put the heat on Jimmy Miller. Here's a shot in the corner blocked by Abel. Coming up with the basketball is Scott McDaniels. Find the best you play. McDaniels down the far side to the left of the basket. Check. Gives the ball back outside again to Poundstone. Over it goes on the left side. McDaniels fires long. Around the rim. No good in the ball. Rebounded by James DeWitt. Here he comes running. Moving down the floor to the top of the key. Good 
tempo in this ball game. In the left corner, he's along the baseline into Jimmy Miller. Lost the ball. They die for it down. Picked up off the floor by John Townstone. Back on the attack into the front court. Townstone feeds it right side into the right corner. It goes. Lynn Wilcher fires. No good. Rebound. Just St. Clair Princeton. 15 to 12. The Tigers lead. St. Clair back into the front court. Against the 1 3 1 zone. Down to the baseline. Left into it. His shot off the inside of the rim. Tapped outside by Joe Abel. Picked up by Buck Cannon. Down the floor to Poundstone. He feeds it in underneath for the close in shot by Wilcher. No good in the rebound. Picked off by Princeton. And we have a foul call. Foul will be charged to John Poundstone. Tim Critchfield coming back into the ball game in place of John Poundstone. I'll tell you one thing Poundstone gives you in there, among others. He gives you a hard-nosed kid who gets in there, and he'll knock a few bodies around and dive on the boards. St. Clair at the line for Princeton on the one-and-ones. Open stance, flips it up with the right hand, misses, tapped around, pulled down by Lynn Wilcher Buchanan, up the floor to Critchfield. Critchfield on the dribble with the right hand is in the front court between the circles. 2-3 zone Princeton. The ball goes to the left corner to Abel. Back outside they come. The pass to Wilcher. Around to the right side. Now the McDaniels out to Wilcher. They work with it on the left side. It comes over to the right to McDaniels. Down to the baseline. And then back deep beyond the top of the key to Wilcher. Back on the right side. They pass it around that zone. They're looking for the opening. They come again to the right side to McDaniels. He goes baseline. He gets a pick. And he doesn't use it. And now they get a three-second call. Chip Longsley set the pick. But he had his heel in the three-second area. So if you got your foot the least bit in the painted area, too long, you get the three-second call. That gives the ball back to Princeton. 15 to 12. One, three, one zone by Cannon. Out in front of Scritchfield. Back underneath is Abel. Princeton works against that zone. Jeff St. Clair outside. So West Virginia has some problems with the one, three, one during the past season. Good tough zone when it's played right. And right now Buchanan's playing it well, but here's Princeton cracking it. Going to the corner and then getting the baseline pass into Jim Miller. And Jimmy Miller responds with his first field goal in close. 17 to 12, Princeton. Buchanan on the attack. From the left corner, Abel fires, hits. Joe Abel with his first field goal. 17 to 14. 447 to play in the first half. Defending champion Princeton against the challenger, Buchanan Upshur, in the final quarterfinal game. Attendance tonight, 8,448. And here is Miller taking a pass in underneath and backing into Lynn Wilcher, and the foul is called on Jimmy Miller. Number two on Jimmy Miller as he backed into the defender. Timeout for Princeton, 434 to play in the second quarter. With timeout, the score, Princeton 17, Buchanan Upshur 14. Official attendance, 8,448, so for the three sessions thus far, the total crowd close to 18,000 fans, and that leaves us four more sessions to go. Broke the record last year, it will be hard to top this season, because we said some of those hotbeds, Williamson, Logan, Beckley, to mention a few, are not represented, and they bring a ton of fans with them. All right, Buchanan on offense, and here is Abel working the baseline left side, trying to get a shot away, and his foul, let's see if it was on the shot. The foul is charged to James DeWitt, his second. Got him on the wrist. So Joe Abel is going to go to the line. Two shots. Joe Abel averaging 12.2 per game, 7.7 .7 rebounds. Left-hander, round the rim, no good. We told you he's an A student, will attend West Virginia this fall, majoring in free medicine. Youngster wears glasses out there. I always thought that... That took a little bit of uh, extra guts. A pair of glasses on without protection in a basketball game. He hits the second one, 17 to 15. Uh-oh, open man, Princeton, and a great play. They get the ball down the floor to Mike Keith. He makes a sensational pass to James DeWitt. It's two on one. DeWitt missed the inside shot, and now we get the foul call on the rebound. Foul charge against Chet Wansley. And DeWitt is going to go to the line. On the two on one, on the two on one, as they approach down the lane, you saw Eves with a knee behind the back bounce pass over to DeWitt. Now, DeWitt at the line hits. So one and one. So he's not in the act of shooting. Makes it 18 to 15 in favor of Princeton with 407 to play in the second period. DeWitt on his second shot. Good. DeWitt is three out of four at the foul line. 19-15 in favor of the Tigers. Full court pressure. Inbound pass up the half court to Abel. Two against two. Abel comes down. And he is attacked by St. Clair. Abel gets around him. Jump shot, but the left side is no good. Rebound, scramble. Jimmy Miller with the ball. Gives it to St. Clair. St. Clair turns on the attack. Right to left. 
Coming into the front court, Buchanan in the 1-3-1 one, one zone. Now let's see if they switch it around. They go back to their 2-3. And they've got Critchfield out as Butler McDaniel. And now we've got St. Clair standing out there and yo-yoing the ball, daring them to move out of that zone to open it up. So they spread their zone. And the ball is moved outside. Now it goes to DeWitt. He cuts into the lane, lays up a shot, no good in the rebound. Pulled down by Joe Abel. Buchanan has the ball back to Critchfield. Left to right, Critchfield coming over the midcourt line on the dribble down into the top of the key. The pass comes right over to Wiltshire. And the feed down in underneath, we have a foul call. The ball went to Wansley. And the foul is called against Princeton. And it is going to be charged to Jimmy Miller. That's his third. Miller coming out of the ball game. And Russell Schrader going in. 6'1", 188, a senior. So on that trade, they give up six inches in height. At the line for Buchanan, Chet Wamsley. 6'3", senior on the one and one. Wamsley, off the close side of the rim, though, good enough. Follow-up shot up and in by Lynn Wilcher. Lynn Wilcher hits it. 19 to 17. We owe you for a station ID. We'll pick that up in just a moment. 2-3 zone for Buchanan. Princeton on the attack. Princeton's going to yo-yo the ball outside. So let's pause for station identification on the State Tournament Basketball Network. This is WAEY, Princeton, West Virginia, AM and FM. Tigers still trying to pull them out of that zone. They've got it spread way out. They come over to DeWitt and back out on the point to St. Clair. Now his pass over to the right side, deflected, out of bounds by Scott McDaniel. Princeton 19, McGannon up to your 17, 238 to play in the first half. Inbounds play east to St. Clair. St. Clair, the 5'8 junior, brings it out between the circles. Pass comes left to do it at quarter court at the hash mark. Back in the middle of the round to the right side is Stephon Murray. Deep again to St. Clair. They're working now with uh, Russell Schrader down underneath. And I think they'd like to run off some time because they're playing without Jimmy Miller. And that might be more what they're doing than spreading that zone. Their big weapon is going from underneath. So they'll try to get that good shot from other quarters and take their time. See if they can hold that lead or maybe just extend it a little bit while Miller is on the bench with three personal fouls. Good strategy. Minute 57 to go. Buchanan stays in the 2-3 zone. Comes out the challenge from time to time. But St. Clair is out there with the ball. Minute 47 to go. Back to the left side, deep to DeWitt. So the team from Princeton, West Virginia, Mercer County. Playing the team from Buchanan, West Virginia, from Upshur County. And another thing about this game, if you wanted to see two prettier towns in West Virginia, you won't find them. There are a lot of nice towns in this state, but none of them any nicer in beauty than these two, Princeton and Buchanan. A couple of real prizes. So the proud cheering folks from both sides at either end of this Coliseum are watching now as Princeton runs time off the clock. I think the reason, Rod, has to be the fact that Jimmy Miller is on the bench with three fouls and they want to run off as much time as they can without him. I think so too, Jack. They definitely know they do not have the, the rebounding strength now. They're outmanned height-wise underneath by the three six five boys and they have to do something to get the good shot and not take a shot that they can't get back. They back that zone back in uh, behind the 15-foot mark. Now they're going to spread it out. Here's St. Clair backing off on the dribble down to 45 seconds on the clock. Over to DeWitt, out to St. Clair, on the right side to East. East gives it to St. Clair in the middle. Buchanan has to come out and challenge. Bucks do that. And here's St. Clair dribbling around and coming back out to the center circle again. Buchanan stays in its zone, spreads it out. 25 seconds remaining in the first half. Princeton leading by two, holding the basketball, protecting that two-point lead, looking for the last shot wanting to get to the dressing room without falling into a tie or getting behind because they're playing without Jimmy Miller. Clock is down to 10. Now here's an alley-oop pass going into Russell Schrader for a turnaround shot from the left. No good. Rebound to Whip. Knocked away from him. Out of bounds to McKenna. McKenna gets the ball with only four seconds to go. Inbounder, McDaniels up to half court. He goes to Wilshire. Wilshire double team. Ball down on the floor. A jump ball with one second. Be a jump ball at center circle. We have only one second remaining in the first half. Lynn Wiltshire of Buchanan, Jeff St. Clair of Princeton. They're ready to throw it up. Wiltshire taps it. Comes to his teammate McDaniels. Fires one. He almost had it. The tap went to McDaniels. He fired a baseball type pass or a football type pass at the basket. It's a little bit long. Came off the board to the left side. 
sweat layers. We're down to the end of the first half of this ball game. The score, Princeton 19, Buchanan Upshur 17. Buchanan Upshur had a 4 nothing lead. Only one lead change. Princeton overtook the Bucks at 9-8. Princeton built a three-point lead, 13 to 10. The end of the quarter led 15 to 10. That 17 to 12. That 19 to 15. Then 19 to 17. And uh, it was another chess game out there. Joe Abel three points for Buchanan Upshur. Lynn Wilshire six. Rob Bennett four. Scott McDaniel's two. Chet Wormsley two. For Princeton, James Dewitt with seven points. Jimmy Miller held to six. One field goal. Mike Eats with four. Jeff St. Clair at two. Jimmy Miller had to go to the bench with three personal fouls. Consequently, Princeton sat on the ball almost for the final three minutes, and it wound up with nobody getting a basket there, but they wanted to protect at least that two-point lead while their big man in the middle was over on the bench. So we're at halftime here at the Coliseum in Morgantown, and we'll continue from the Coliseum after this important message. And beside me, a gentleman sitting here, and uh, I don't know whether it's nice to call anybody a know-it-all, but if anyone knows most of it about the North Fork Blue Demon records, it has to be their statistician, Gary Dove. And, Gary, uh, you keep some of, the, some of the finest stats that we've ever gotten our hands on, uh, a, real, a real help to the broadcasters around the state whenever they play uh, the North Fork Blue Demon. However, there's something that everybody is talking about here, and that is the possibility that the Blue Demons might win the championship here Saturday. Now, they'll be playing against Winfield, and should they win, this will tie a national record. Providence Central High School, is that right? Right, that is right, Rod. I appreciate that fine introduction by you. And uh, it will tie a record of seven consecutive championships by Providence Central in Rhode Island. Now, I want to ask you, uh, uh, being down around Northport, what is the feeling around Northport? Is, is, it, uh, is, it, is it really uh, the, the great thing that, that people in the other parts of the state are, are, are feeling that it is? Or do the people down in Northport, are they beginning to more or less take it for granted? Uh, we don't take it for granted by any means. Uh, sometimes we play lackadaisically, uh, and it may appear that we're taking it for granted, but uh, we just have lapses due to many different problems that every team experiences. Everyone around North is very excited about this as a state championship first, and then also about the fact that it could possibly tie a national record. Also, uh, in with our enthusiasm, we're getting calls, we're getting telegrams, we're getting letters and well wishes from everyone around the state. We feel this will be a great thing for the state of West Virginia, as well as for Norfolk if we pull this off Saturday. And I'll tell you, you've got your hands full working against this Winfield ball club. They're very tall, they're talented, they play good basketball. But should it happen, I want to say that uh, it, it's happening to a wonderful person in Jennings Boyd because he, he is truly a, a real gentleman, as are all the fellows down around Norfolk. Something that you put in the statistics that out of the times that North Fork has been here, what is it, six times they've won the sportsmanship trophy as well as the state championship. Right. We won it six times out of seven visits. Won it in 71, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79. Uh, listen to him. Right off the top of his head, he spouts all these stats. You, put, you fellas put together a, a tremendous booklet uh, about uh, the Blue Demons, and it has been a real help to us throughout the season. We had a chance to watch North Fork play about six games. Let's quickly transgress and talk just a little bit about this ball game. I know that there's a young man on the Princeton bench, the assistant coach that uh, you probably remember from uh, from North Fork. Right, very well. Bruce Hinthorn, uh, Princeton's new assistant coach, played for us in uh, 1969, 1970, and 1971, and he was a captain on our 1971 team, which was fortunate enough to win our first state championship right here on the uh, WVU Coliseum floor. I'll tell you, the North Fork Blue Demon squad has a tremendous amount of records and uh, things that, that have not been accomplished. And let's hope that uh, very possibly something nice could come to Jennings Boyd uh, if he should win this eighth, uh, the seventh championship in a row. And that's what, uh, that's what it's all about. The signs everywhere are saying almost seven. And I just wondered if down in Yalls County that things were as exciting as they are here in Morgantown. Right, very definitely, Rod. We have everyone in the county excited. And uh, as I alluded to earlier, I think it's uh, 
Uh, there are quite a few people in the state that are pulling for us also, and it'll be just a great thing for North Fork, for McDowell County, and for the whole state of West Virginia should we pull it off Saturday. I doubt very seriously if anyone from Winfield is pulling very hard for you, though, Gary. Really? <laughs> because you'll be taking on the Winfield Generals on Saturday. I want to thank you for taking time to come by and talk to us here at halftime. We'll continue from the Coliseum in Morgantown after this important message. A round of the Class AAA division. Already set is the ball game on uh, tomorrow afternoon between St. Albans and Huntington. That, uh, that bracket was decided on Wednesday evening. This afternoon, Wheeling Park defeated South Charleston to move to the semifinals. And the winner of this Buchanan and Princeton game will take on Wheeling Park tomorrow evening. The double A is decided as we are moving into the double-A finals. It'll be Winfield taking on North Fork. Tomorrow we'll open Class A action here at the Coliseum in Morgantown. It's halftime. The score is Princeton 19, Buchanan Upshur 17. Jack Fleming will be back with the second half half tip-off following these messages from the State Tournament Network sponsors. Back again at the WVU Coliseum. Jack Fleming along with Rod Adell and Fred Persinger. The State Tournament final triple-A quarterfinal game. Princeton leading 19 to 17 over Buchanan Upshur. Princeton in white. Out there now. Rather Buchanan in white out there with, I'll get it right, Chet Wamsley. They've got Rob Bennett. See, Bennett is not in there at the moment, so they're holding him out with those three personals, and Lynn Wilcher is going to jump. And he jumps against Jimmy Miller, who is back in, and the tap goes to Buchanan. Scott McDaniels playing outside with Tim Fritchfield. To the left corner to Joe Abel, who is in. And they're also working with Chet Wamsley in there and Lynn Wilcher. Go to the right corner. Princeton with a very active 2-3 zone. Firing over at Abel. It's Scott McDaniels. McDaniels out at about 18-foot range, and he ties up the ball game. That is the first tie we've had tonight. Now, for Princeton, the backliners are St. Clair and Eve. they got Jimmy Miller in the front line with Murray and DeWitt. But Cannon playing the 1-3-1 one, one zone with Abel back underneath. To get it in the Miller turns around, fires the shot. He hit it, but it's still good. He was fouled ahead of the shot, and the foul is on Chet Wamsley. So on that common foul, the ball will be inbounded at the baseline. James DeWitt, sophomore, bounce pass into Eads. He swings into the lane, gets the ball to Miller, and Miller lays it up. That was a great play by Eads. He throws laterally at the lane, and then... He dumped it off to Miller, 21 to 19, and Miller responded inside. One minute gone in the third quarter. Princeton leading 21 to 19. Down comes back. Buckhead goes to Abel. He's in the lane, lays up an easy shot on a bank. It comes off no good. And on the rebound, a foul is called. Foul against Princeton. Charge to Jimmy Miller. Miller gets his fourth personal. And that comes one minute into the third quarter. Well, that puts Princeton in a real bind. Russell Schrader is in and Miller is out. That inbound play for Buchanan goes to Wilcher, tries to shot. Now, look at the follow up is made by Joe Abel on the follow up, and we have another tie at 21. All right, back on the attack. Princeton moving at the basket to the right. St. Clair, bouncer over to Schrader. Again, they work without Miller. Back up to the top of the key. St. Clair takes the shot. They're going to the rebound. Wilcher. Here comes Buchanan moving into the front court. McDaniels moving the ball over to Critchfield and back again to McDaniels. Coming out on the point to Critchfield. Against the 3 2 zone. 21 21 ball game. Buchanan into the right corner. Going over to Wamsley. Now around to the left side. Wilcher angle left. 15 footer. Good. Lynn Wilcher. And Buchanan retaking the lead. Princeton calling a timeout. 6.06 to play in the third quarter. Time out of the ballgame. The score. Buchanan Upshur, 23. Princeton, 21. Tomorrow night, doubleheader in the afternoon. We will have one single-A semifinal game and one triple-A semifinal game. And then at nighttime, another single-A semifinal game and a triple-A semifinal game. So the double-A's are already in the championship round with North Fork and Winfield matched up in the title game on Saturday afternoon. Right, Princeton has set, set a strategy, playing without Jimmy Miller, who has four fouls, one minute into the third quarter. Here is Eads driving, into the right corner to DeWitt, jump shot, no good, rebound McDaniels for BU, 
Here he comes into the front court. Bouncer goes down to Abel. Abel drives, lays it up good. 25 21. The Bucks in the lead. St. Clair back into the front court for the Tigers. Over to the right side to Weed. He shoots over a pick by Murray. Off the rim, no good, and on the rebound, the foul call. Charge to Scott McDaniel of Buchanan Upshur. The Buccaneers looking to an opportunity to take control of the ball game with Jimmy Miller. Out of the Princeton lineup with four personal fouls. At the baseline, DeWitt will inbound it. Back deep, it comes and in out of the right corner to Weed. Gives it to DeWitt deep in the corner. 2-3 zone for Buchanan. Princeton brings it outside to St. Clair. Princeton down by four, showing no signs of panic. They work very calmly against the zone. They have to. To the top of the key to St. Clair, around to the left side. They go. Ball is taken over there by Schrader. Now they get it in for the shot drive by DeWitt. No good. Tapped around. Saved over in the corner. Hoops ruled out of bounds. Out to Buchanan. The Buccaneers get the inbounds play to Abel. On the near side, he's in the front court, and Princeton comes out and traps momentarily. Ball goes to McDaniels. Here's McDaniels now. They spread that zone out. Net. And let's see now if uh, Princeton is switching it in to a man-to-man for the first time. Here's a pass broken up. Eads comes up with the ball. Eads driving down the floor. But Cannon falls back on the fence and gets back in quickly. Princeton, ball goes to Eads, traveling. St. Clair gave the pass to Mike Eads, right at the top of the key. He made a move to go down the lane, and he traveled as he took off. 25-21. Buchanan Upshur leading Princeton, the defending state champion in the AAA ranks. Buchanan on the attack. We have a collision. And a foul call. Charge this one to James Dewitt of Princeton. That is his third. Inbound play will come from Scott McDaniels for the Buccaneers into Jim Critchfield. Driving into the key. Pass over on the right side to McDaniels. Down into the key, but a jump shot by Wilshire. No good. And tapped into the air. And a rebounding foul on Joe Abel. Abel committing his first. Critchfield coming out of the ball game, and John Townstone coming back in. Townstone, 5'9", 170. Not tall, but I tell you what, he's still like... A block of granite. He looks like a football player. As we told him, he was in the ball game in the first half. And he's willing to get out there and pick up a few splinters. Buchanan with a 2-3 zone and a pass broken up by Abel. Fine effort, but he carried it out of bounds. Joe Abel had his hammer on the pass. Knocked it out of bounds, so Princeton will put it in play. James DeWitt on the near side. Into Mike Eads. Back out to St. Clair. St. Clair goes over to the left of the key. Back across to the right to Eads. He's cutting in, getting a 10-foot jumper up off the rim. No good. Slammed around and on the rebound. The foul called on Joe Abel. This is Bon Murray. We'll go to the line. He is scoreless in the ball game and has not had a free throw opportunity. 6'3", 165-pound junior will have... Nope, there was not a shooting foul. He had already gone to the foul line. They say no. Princeton will inbound it. No shot. Princeton with the ball. Out to St. Clair on the point. He backs off on the dribble away from a 2-3 zone. Now advances toward the top of the key. The pass goes over to quarter court left to DeWitt. Back out again to St. Clair. He shoots ball on top of the circle. Back of the rim. No good. Rebound. Picked off by Townstone. Brings it down the floor into the front court. Dishes it off to Wilshire for a long jump shot to the right side. Wilshire hit it. There was a whistle on the play. Let's see what the call is. The basket good by Wilshire. Wilshire hit the jump shot. And the foul was called on Mike Eads, his first. But Cannon moving out to a 27 to 21 lead. And Wilshire with a three point chance at the line to the left. Rolls it off the rim and in. Good. 28 to 21. And that's with 3.46 to go in the third quarter. Down comes Mike Eads. He's back outside again to St. Clair. Now, what's happening? Princeton having to shoot over that zone defense, not able to hit, and not having the rebounding power inside. Now, with the ball getting away from Eads, he tracks it down in the right corner. Bouncer back out to St. Clair. Over on the left side to DeWitt. DeWitt going to the baseline. He gets a shot off up in the air. A whistle, but before the shot, the foul on John Townstone is second. One and one. That's going to put James DeWitt at the foul line. He's made three out of four, all of them in the first half. 
James to win at the line of the right with the right hand. He stands one. Now that is only the third point that Princeton has scored in this third quarter. To win another one. 28 to 23. The Buccaneers leading. Full court pressure from Princeton. Ball into Wiltshire. Wiltshire back again to McDaniels. McDaniels working. Covered heavily at midcourt. Gets it into the front court to Poundstone. Poundstone driving over to the right side. Pass to Wiltshire. Wiltshire into the lane. Running one-hander. Short. Taken out of the air. Juggled. Tapped around to Poundstone. Poundstone goes up in the air to foul call. First of all, Wamsley tried to get it. He tapped it to Poundstone. Poundstone got into the air. And he was fouled. And the foul is charged to Russell Schrader of Princeton. And John Poundstone will go to the line. He has two shots. Poundstone, a 5'9 junior, is scoreless. His first trip into the circle. Poundstone for BU at the line. Buchanan leading 28-23. Right-hander up good. John Poundstone makes it 29-23. We have 3.02 to play in the third quarter. Poundstone ready to go with another shot. Back of the rim, no good on the rebound. Tapped outside. A big off by Mike East. East coming up the near side into the front court. Left to right. 29-23. Buchanan up sure leading by six. Ball goes over to St. Clair. Back to the right side. Rather deep to East. Against the 2-3 zone. Out to St. Clair on the left side. St. Clair fires. 20 feet out. Up off the rim. No good in the rebound. Scramble. Picked up off the floor by Murray, and he is tied up. Stephon Murray got his hands on the ball, but he was tied up by Joe Abel. At the line, we'll have a jump ball. DeWitt, or rather, Murray against Abel. Tapped around, about Cannon up sure has it. Wilcher, down the floor to McDaniels. Driving into the key, feeds it down to the baseline. The pound stroke gets an off bounce shot away. Don't get the rebound, Abel. We have a whistle. Holding call against Princeton. Foul is charged to Stephon Murray. One and one. Number two on Murray. Joe Abel will go to the line. Abel is one for two at the foul line. Both in the first half. He has seven points in the ball game. Average is 12.2 across the season. Open stance. He's a lefty. From overhead, it's up good. When I say overhead, not high. Just above his head. 30 to 23. The Buccaneers leading the Tigers. 2.32 to play in the third quarter. Here's the second one. Right in there. Abel makes a pair of them. 31 to 23. Here comes St. Clair into the front court, left to right. Buchanan up sure leading now by eight points. Gets the ball over to Eads. Eads wheeling into the lane, and he's fouled. Foul charge to Poundstone. John Poundstone gets his third foul. Mike Eads will go to the line. Eads has had no free throw opportunities in the ball game. He's averaging 14.7 per game. Has four points off scored in the first half. Two field goals. He's in there on the one and one. And he hits Mike Eads for Princeton. 31 to 24. Eads at the line to the right. Slightly open stance. Left foot back just a bit. And the second shot is good. 31 to 25. Full court pressure from Princeton. Inbounds play and away from the ball. We get a foul called on Townstone. That will be his fourth a pushing call on John Townstone. So Princeton will go right back to the line. Jeff St. Clair on the one and one. Outstanding student. Point guard, 5'8 junior, averaging 8.5 per game. St. Clair at the line of the right with the open stance from a little crowd, flips it up, it's good. He's one out of two at the line now, and he has a bonus shot coming, 31 to 26. We have 223 to play in the third quarter. And St. Clair digs in at the line to the right. Second shot, good. Boy, they're making it up at the free throw line, 31 to 27. The lead is down to four. But Cannon sees pressure on the inbounds play, requesting a timeout. And that brings the coach, Jim Marsh, above the bench. Shouting, what are you doing? He didn't understand that call by his player. So we have a timeout of the ball game. The score. But Canada up to 31, Princeton 27. That's Uncle Henry's watch. He carried it for 51 years. Wouldn't it be sad for something to happen to it now? 
Heirlooms are something irreplaceable and deserve special protection. That's why a safe deposit box at Princeton Bank and Trust is a necessity. It guards valuable items and papers from fire and theft. A safe deposit box at Princeton Bank will care for Uncle Henry's watch when you're not wearing it. Then someday, you'll be able to pass it on, just as he did. Princeton Bank and Trust Company, people who know how to help. Member FDIC. Have a free holiday on Range Piano. Yes, three days and two nights in fabulous Las Vegas. Purchase any of a selected group of Gibson guitars, banjos, or mandolins, and you'll get the Las Vegas vacation absolutely free. Also at Range, with the purchase of a custom mic, you'll receive the mic stand free. Plus, choose from an assortment of picks for only five cents each. Get full details from Stuart at Range. He'll help you with all your musical needs. Range Piano and Organ Center, downtown Princeton. That Las Vegas trip can be yours now from Range. And now it's Jim Critchfield bringing it up, double teamed at half court. Passes over to McDaniels coming down the near side. It's stabbed, almost knocked away from him by St. Clair. The Princeton defense coming alert. Very alive, man for man now. Away from the ball, we get a call. And it will be charged to Russell Schrader. We're going to pause now for station identification on the state tournament basketball network. At the line for Buchanan Upster, Chet Wamsley. On the one and one, he hits. Wamsley had missed his one opportunity in the first half. 32 to 27 with 205 to play in the third quarter. Wamsley with three points now. A 6-3 senior. Puts up the next one over the rim. Bounces back out. No good in a rebound. Follow up. Lynn Wilcher misses. And the ball tapped over to Mike Eads. Racing down the far side on the dribble. Eads into the front court. Princeton down now by five. They play without Jimmy Miller. Who's been on the bench a long time. With fouls. Got E driving down to the baseline, coming under, feeding a bounce pass to Murray. Murray went hands it up, good for the lane. His first field goal. Now that had to be a great play by E. As he drove the baseline and then bounced it back into the lane to Murray. 32-29. Down comes Buchanan and firing Chet Wamsley. Ten feet off on the left side. 34-29. The Buccaneers on top. Minute 24 to go in the third quarter. James DeWitt for Princeton. Fires, 18 feet out of the left side, make it 15 feet. He had two men on him, a nice shot. 34-31, all of a sudden the scoring comes alive and Buchanan throws the ball away. Out of bounds. Bad pass as Scott McDaniels went for Tim Critchfield through it high. So with a minute 11 to go in the third quarter, Princeton trailing by three. Has an opportunity to close it down. St. Clair over to Eve. Out to St. Clair on the point, around to Murray on the left wing. They post one man low, and out popping high is DeWitt to take it. Fires to the left side, 16-foot range, and he hits it. James DeWitt, 34-33. to 33. And now Princeton has found a shooting eye. Down comes Buchanan. McDaniels, long lead pass, too far ahead of Joe Abel, out of bounds. 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. Princeton down by one, has the ball back. The Tigers have battled back from an eight-point deficit. At 31 to 23. Jump shot, right corner by E. So good. Rebound, Chet Wamsley for the Buccaneers. With the ball, Critchfield under pressure comes down. St. Clair dives, knocks it away from him on a good, clean steal. Schrader comes up with it. And Princeton is back on the attack. What a play by St. Clair. He dives all the way on the floor behind. The man with the ball to knock it away. Clock down to seven seconds. Here's E. going to the basket, lays it up, no good in the rebound by Lynn Wilshire, but Cannon, two seconds. Down the floor, long one by McDaniels, short. We're at the end of the third quarter of this AAA ball game at the Coliseum in Morgantown. We'll return after these messages from the State Tournament Network sponsor. So, Dell and Fred Persinger at the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown. West Virginia State Tournament action continuing tonight. Final quarterfinal game in the AAA division. And we have Princeton and Buchanan one point apart. Buchanan leading by one. We're going into the fourth quarter. Jimmy Miller with four fouls back in for Princeton. Jumping against Lynn Wilcher. Wilcher, heavily recruited by many colleges, wants to major in accounting. And he gets the tap and it goes to Princeton. Stephon Murray. Over to Mike Deeds, into the front court, outside. Ball controlled by Jeff St. Clair, himself an A student. Round to the left wing to Mike Deeds. Deeds down to the baseline in the corner, left side. 
Back out to St. Clair. Round to the right wing to James DeWitt. Takes a long one. 18-footer. Good angle right. And Princeton goes back into the lead. 35 to 34. That game was 740 remaining in the ballgame. So we get a lead change. Only the third one of the game. Princeton ahead by one. McCannon on the attack. Wilcher on the right wing. Holding the ball up over his head with two hands. Into the right corner they go. Down to McDaniels and back out to Abel. They've got Abel way out high. Rob Bennett is back in. He's posted high. I'll be on the foul line. Over to the far side to pass to McDaniels. McDaniels driving and fouled on the drive. Mike Eads. Charged with his second foul. Jimmy Miller is coming out of the ball game again. Back into the ball game. It's Scott McDaniels at the line for Buchanan. He'll pick up those lines, lineups in a moment. 35-35 as he hits. We're back into a tie again. That's the third tie. Second one is good. And Buchanan up here retakes the lead. 36-35. All right, let's check them out. St. Clair needs in there. We've got DeWitt in the front line with Murray and Russell Schrader. Long one. DeWitt almost not quite. And the rebound by Scott McDaniels. Driving down a ball, comes into the front court, loses control of the ball, and a double dribble. McDaniels, Townstone is in there. In the front line, Wiltshire, Abel, and Bennett. McCannon playing a 1 3 1 zone with Abel back under the basket. Princeton attacking to the right. St. Clair, Counter over to the left side to Eve. He makes his move into the lane and call for traveling. Heading into the lane, he's called for traveling. Now Princeton will pick them up as Buchanan inbounds in the backcourt. Buccaneers leading by one point. Ball into Wiltshire. Wiltshire with 11 points in the game, averaging 18.2 in the season. Into the front court comes Soundstone. Soundstone being crowded outside, moves the ball over to Wiltshire. Now they got the cutters coming underneath as they post Bennett high. Ball goes to Bennett at the foul line. Jump shot back of the rim. No good. Bennett rebounds it. Turn around. Follow up shot from 12. No good to the rebound by Russell Schrader. Here comes Princeton. He's driving down the floor into the right side of the key. Four foot jump shot short. Pulled out of the air by Buchanan Upshur. Clearing the board was Scott McDaniels. 5.57 to play. Buchanan leading by one point. Ball goes to Wilcher for the Buccaneers. Down to the baseline, right side to Abel for a turnaround try. That is no good and on the rebound. It's tapped out of bounds. Princeton gets it back. Up off the Buchanan Upshur bench, Chet Walmsley. 6'3", senior, ready to come back into the ballgame. Here is St. Clair for Princeton. To the left wing to James DeWitt. Back to St. Clair on the point around to the right side of Eves. Eves works on the dribble against the 1-3-1 zone. And they take it around the horn to DeWitt on the left side. He went down to the left corner, trapped over there, but that's gone back out to Eve. Eve's down to the right side of the key, and he can't get the shot, and back again to St. Clair. Round to the left wing to DeWitt, and DeWitt again down to the left corner, fires, hit. James DeWitt for the left corner, 37 to 36. And we get the fifth lead change. Princeton by one point. Attacking, Townstone is in the front court, goes down on the floor, and is tied up. Townstone lost his footing, went down on the floor, and was tied up, there'll be a jump ball. Chet Wamsley coming back out on the floor, and Joe Abel coming out of the ball game for Buchanan. Townstone on the jump against Mike East. In the Buchanan foul circle, East pass it over to DeWitt. Princeton leading by one is the ball again with five minutes to go. The defending state champions are holding it outside now. Here's St. Clair yo-yoing the ball. They want him to come out of that zone. Goes over to the left side to DeWitt. DeWitt holds it, scratches his nose with his right finger, uh, right hand. Holds the ball with his left. Now he puts it on the floor. Takes it down the left sideline. Back out again to St. Clair. St. Clair, the little 5 8 playmaker, on the dribble to the right side, calls for help from Eve. He gets the ball, and Buchanan goes man for man. Bounce pass down to Schrader. Schrader double team back out to Eve. Eve deep to St. Clair. St. Clair calls out the play as Jimmy Miller comes up off the bench. Here's St. Clair giving the ball deep left over to DeWitt on the far side. DeWitt coming into the key. DeWitt down the lane, trying to feed it, and DeWitt called on a charge. DeWitt came down, dished the ball off, and they called a charge on James DeWitt. That is his fourth foul. 
One on one. We'll go back to the other end to shoot. We get a timeout call with 410 to play in the ball game. On timeout, the score. Princeton 37, Buchanan Upshur 36. Rod Odell, Fred Persinger back at the Coliseum in Morgantown. The home of the West Virginia Mountaineers playing host to the State High School Basketball Tournament, the 67th edition. Boy, we've had some great action today. Wheeling Park defeating South Charleston by two points in three overtimes. Winfield and North Fork advancing into the AA championship game. And now Princeton and Buchanan buying in a tight ball game for the final AAA position in the semifinals. 37-36 Princeton. At the line, Chet Wamsley can tie it up. He does. It hit the front of the rim, went up against the glass, and fell back down through. That's the fourth tie, 37-37. Now Wamsley could give the Buccaneers the lead. Wamsley at the line to the left. He does. 38-37, and we get the sixth lead change. Here comes St. Clair coolly into the front court. Four minutes to go in the ball game. Princeton has the ball trailing by one. Against a 1-3-1 one, one zone for Buchanan Upshur. Into Jimmy Miller back in the ball game. Turn around shot from 12. They'll get in the rebound for the left side. Up and in, James DeWitt. DeWitt was right there. 39-37. And the lead swings back to Princeton. DeWitt with seven at halftime. That's 12 in the second half and a total of 19. Here comes Buchanan. Townstone driving. And the foul call on Mike Eves. Number three on Eves. So John Townstone, who is one for two at the line, will go back to the line on the one and one. Townstone at the line to the left. Puts it up with a right-handed trip. Here's Townstone ready for the second one. That ties it up at 39. This one misfires on the rebound by James DeWitt. So, Boundstone brings us in to our fifth tie. 39 all. 3.30 to play in the ballgame. Princeton has it. Jeff St. Clair outside. Now they, they move the 1-3-1 one, out just a bit, but not much. Princeton goes over to East on the left side and back out again to St. Clair and around to the right wing to DeWitt. DeWitt fires from 18 feet out at the right. They'll get it away about Poundstone outside. Poundstone protects the ball for Buchanan. Moves the pass up the floor to McDaniels. Going down the far side of the right of the basket, check. Pass comes outside to Poundstone. Poundstone laterally between the rings, and the pass comes to Wiltshire. Back to the top of the key over to McDaniels. McDaniels to Wiltshire. Wiltshire, one bounce of the ball, fires 15 feet out, angle left, off the rim. They'll get in the rebound, picked up by Princeton. St. Clair will bring it up the floor. 39-39, 2.46 to play. Princeton has played much of the second half without Jimmy Miller and a great deal, not a great deal, but a good portion of the second period without Miller. And now we get a timeout call. What do you, what you got, Jay? Or are they calling a technical? Hey, Jay, what's going on? Calling a technical foul on Buchanan for delay of game. That's coming out. And that will put Jeff St. Clair at the line. A technical foul against Buchanan for not coming out from its zone to challenge the offensive team and the free throw made by St. Clair. That comes with 2.31 to play. And Princeton goes back in the lead. The eighth, eighth lead change. And Princeton also keeps the basketball. Inbounds pass to St. Clair. St. Clair down the right side of the front court to DeWitt. DeWitt pass goes down to Jimmy Miller, right side of the basket. Gets his shot up good. Miller getting the shot up. 42 to 39. 2.15 to play. Buckhead with the ball. Wiltshire outside. Over to McDaniels. Got to get it into the key to Wiltshire. Fires from 15, no good. And we have a three-second call against Buckhead. Three-second violation. McKenna wants a timeout. Timeout of the ball game. The score, Princeton 42. McKenna up here, 39. Two minutes and five seconds reading on the clock. Princeton leading by 242 to 39. And they're both back.
back out on the floor again. Now, the Princeton lineup, DeWitt, Murray, Miller, Eves, and St. Clair. Schrader has been the only substitute in there, I do believe. I'm correct. Here's the inbounds pass, intercepted. Picked off, laid up there by Lynn Wilcher. Hangs on the rim and falls through the 42 to 41. Coming down the floor, a foul call on John Downstone. That's his fifth. He fouls out of the ball game. Downstone, no field goals. Two out of four is the line at two points. The inbounds flat, three to 41 in favor of Princeton. And we have a minute 55 to go. At the line to the right, Jeff St. Clair of the Tigers. It's another one. He's played five in a row at the line. 44-41. Three-point lead. Inbounds play. McDaniels to Wiltshire. And Wiltshire brings it up the floor. A good athlete. Over the midcourt line. Wiltshire outside to Critchfield. Princeton man for man. Critchfield driving. St. Clair stabs. Can't get it. The ball over to Wiltshire. He fires 60 feet out of this. Just at the right of the key. 44-43. to 43. Wilcher coming through for Buchanan. He has an 18.2 average on the season. And here's a foul call. With Princeton on offense, the foul call on Jim Grishfield. Mike East will go to the line. <laughs> Princeton has shot extremely well at the foul line. St. Clair has made five out of six. Eves has made two out of two out of three. This one, Miss Fires. Rebound. Taken by Wilcher. Wilcher with the outlet going to McDaniels. Princeton leading by one a minute twenty-five on the clock by and up with the ball. Critchfield to the left side of Wilcher. Wilcher trying to feed it in. He gets it in there to Rob Bennett. Knocked away. Saved by Wilcher. And back out deep to McDaniel. Over to Wilcher on the left side. Princeton man for man. Now to feed. Goes into Bennett. Turn around shot from 12. They're going to be about cleared out of there by Stephon Murray of Princeton with a minute to go. The Tigers have the ball in the one point lead. Here's an overplay and a pass broken up. Knocked out of bounds by Chet Wamsley. Jimmy Miller wants a timeout for Princeton. Timeout of the ball game. The score. Princeton 44, but Cannon up to 43. Right now it's a one-pointer. Princeton on top, 44-43. Tigers have the ball with 58 seconds to go in the game. Off the bench for Princeton, John Hansbarger, 6 feet, 150, a senior. And they're getting some uh, ball handlers. Quickness in their three guards, Hansbarger, St. Clair, and Eve, along with Jimmy Miller and James DeWitt. the inbounds play at midcourt. All right, Buchanan setting up its defense. The Buccaneers want the ball. The inbounds play goes to Mike Eves. He's in the backcourt. Eves against McDaniels gets it over the line. Driving to the left between the rings. Back outside to St. Clair. Deep on the near side to Hansbarger. Hansbarger cutting into the key check. Back outside again to Eves. 40 seconds to go. Princeton has the ball. One point lead. Eves. Gives it off to St. Clair. St. Clair coming down the lane. Feeds it down to the baseline right to DeWitt. He's cut off, comes back outside. 27 seconds. Ball goes outside to Eves. Eves dribbling. Looks for receiver. Over to Jimmy Miller. And now the pass. Now we get a whistle. Miller foul. Jimmy Miller foul outside to the left corner. Foul on Rob Bennett. That's his fourth. So Miller will go to the line early in the ball game. Miller made four out of four at the free throw line. So the tall, slender star of the Princeton Tigers, only a junior, to be at the line on the one and one. But Cannon wants a timeout. 19 seconds to play. Timeout of the ball game. The score. Princeton 44. But Cannon up to 43. The State High School Basketball Tournament. Number 67. They go back quite a few years. A lot of outstanding games. And this has been a good one. No question about it. Jimmy Miller, who's had to sit out much of this game, goes to the line on the one and one. Princeton leading by one point. Miller at the line to the right, puts the shot up, and it is good. 45-43. He uses a high arching free throw right on the money. He's made five in a row. 19 seconds to go. And Miller ready again. Miller puts it up. No good. Fought for it. Rebounded by Rob Bennett. But Cannon down the floor to Joe Abel. Abel in the front court. Gives it to McDaniel. And but Cannon calls a timeout. 12 seconds to go. But Cannon down by two calls a timeout. With a timeout of the ballgame, the score. 
Princeton, 45. Buchanan up to 43. I noticed, uh, old buddy, you've taken off your headset. You've given me uh, a triple overtime today and the possibility here of another overtime tonight. Well, uh, I try to do that to you as often as possible. Might be That's trying to wear me out. <laughs> We've got a good one on going oh, on here tonight. Good All right, 12 seconds to go. Buchanan down by two as the ball out of bounds in the front court. McDaniels will make the inbounds play. All right, McDaniels into Wiltshire. Wiltshire out in the center circle. Cuts down to the left of the key. Almost lost it. Keeps it. Jump shot. Left side. Off the rim. No good. Fight for the ball. Picked up on the right side. Three seconds. Long shot for the outside. Off the rim. The shot by McDaniels was short, and the ball game is over. Wiltshire got the shot from the left. It missed. A scramble for the ball. Over on the right side. McDaniels picked it up. Way out. He was about 20 feet. He saw the clock was down to three seconds. And he fired. He did the only thing he could do. It came off the short side of the rim. And Princeton, the defending champion, has got Buchanan out of the tournament. Jim Marsh goes down to congratulate Ralph Ball and the fine show sportsmanship. Both clubs meeting out on the floor, along with their cheerleaders shaking hands. And we have had ourselves an outstanding ball game. But the defending champion, Princeton Tigers, move into the semifinal round against Wheeling Park, and the final score was 45 to 43. That concludes the ball game. Let me repeat, the final score, Princeton, 45, but getting up to your 43. We had a total of five ties, eight lead changes. Princeton got the lead back at 40 to 39, and Ironically, it was on a technical foul called on McCann Upshur for delay of game for not coming out to challenge the uh, Princeton offense, and St. Clair hit it to give Princeton a one-point lead. Tigers led 42-39, 44-41. McCannon battled right back. Jimmy Miller, with 19 seconds to go, hit the front end of a two-shot situation at the foul line to make it 45-43. He missed the second one. McKinnon had the ball with 19 seconds, brought it into the front court, called timeout with 12 seconds to go. Got the ball to Wilshire for the shot. It didn't drop. And for the far side, Scott McDaniels tried to hit a panic shot that, with only three seconds to go. And it was just off the rim. And McKinnon, after winning 22 in a row, an opening loss to Morgantown, winning 22 in a row and coming to the state quarterfinals, is the loser, 45-43. to 43. So... The Buccaneers close out the season at 22-2. and two. The Tigers move to 19-5, and five, and they go into the semifinals against Wheeling Park. Now, what do you see in that semifinal round, my friend? Uh, that, should be, that should be some kind of ball game. Princeton has showed that they can uh, hang in there with the tall teams. Wheeling Park, a very tall team, but they showed me something else in the ball game earlier against South Charleston. That, that is uh, a running ball game. They fast break very well, and... Uh, this is something that Buchanan Upshur was unable to do tonight, was fast break. Wheeling fast breaks, well, that should be a whale of a ball game. What I was thinking about a few minutes ago, we've got St. Albans against Huntington, two southern teams against Wheeling Park, and uh, Wheeling Park against uh, Princeton, so we still have a northern team left in there. Wheeling Park, it could very well end up north against south in the finals on Saturday. I thought the incredible thing about Princeton was the fact that Jimmy Miller, uh, after not being called on the foul in the first quarter, picked up three in the second quarter, and then had to go to the bench before halftime. So they stalled out. He went to the bench, and they stalled away almost three minutes with a two-point lead, protected it at halftime. Okay, he starts the third quarter. One minute into the third quarter, he gets his fourth foul. He goes back to the bench. And Buchanan jumped right on that and built up a lead of 28 to 21, 31 to 23. And that was with uh, all two minutes and, say, 40 seconds to go in the third period. But then Princeton kept its poise and went to work. It got a great second half from James DeWitt. They got the steady play of Eads and St. Clair. And, and Schrader came in to help out. And you saw these people working together, and they were so patient. And they finally cut it down to 31-27. At the end of the third quarter, Buchanan led by one point. And then came the series of lead changes and ties in the fourth period with Princeton getting control of the ball game. So the important thing was that Princeton did it with Jimmy Miller out of there a great deal of the second half and three minutes at the end of the second quarter. Let's look at the scoring. Joe Abel, three field goals, three out of four at the line, nine points. Lynn Wiltshire, Abel and Wiltshire playing their final game for Buchanan Upshur. Wiltshire, seven field goals, one for one, 15 points. Rob Bennett, a junior, 
two field goals, four points. Scott McDaniel's the senior. His last game, keep in mind, he's an all-Big Ten conference uh, defensive back in football, so he'll be going to college, maybe playing football rather than basketball. McDaniel's two field goals, two for two at the line, six points. Tim Critchfield did not score. Chet Wamsley, two field goals, three out of five, and seven points. John Townstone off the bench to pick up a lot of splinters. He also fouled out late in the game with two points, two out of four at the line. For Princeton, James DeWitt held at seven at halftime, responded in the second half, and they needed him finished with seven field goals, five out of six at the line, and 19 points. Stephon Murray, one very big basket for Princeton late in the ballgame for two points. Jimmy Miller, uh, held out of action. He had to miss almost half the game, not quite, but almost half the game uh, with his foul problem. And Jimmy Miller had three field goals, five out of six at the line, 11 points. Mike Eads finished with six points. Jeff Sinclair, who went five of six at the foul line, five consecutive free throws in the second half, scored a total of seven points. And that was the scoring for the Princeton Tigers. i tell you what, you look down that list of uh, semifinal qualifiers, St. Albans, Huntington, Wheeling Park, and Princeton, and like you say, I see nothing but good, tough competition. I, I wouldn't venture. I would not venture to say which teams will be in the finals or which one will come out on top on Saturday. Nor would I, Jack. Of course, the finals in Class AA have already been set. It'll be the same matchup we had in the AA championship game last year, Northport against Winfield. Winfield very tall and talented. Northport, uh, tournament-wise, they've, they've won six in a row. They're trying for seven. Uh, the question here again, can they withstand the pressure of trying for that national uh, record, or will it get, get to them? Can Winfield uh, uh, over, overcome the, the thought of what happened to them last year when they got beat by Northport when uh, they felt that they should have won the ball game, uh, you know, and Northport came out ahead? Then tomorrow we open Class A. We've got four Class E teams in the uh, Class A competition. That'll be one tomorrow afternoon and one tomorrow night, and then we'll wind it all up with the three championship games Saturday. Run down the scores today in Double A. All right, in scores. We have Winfield over Ravenswood, 48 to 40. Northport pulling away from Berkeley Springs for 74-57 victory in Triple A. Final score in Triple Overtime: Wheeling Park 65, South Charleston 63. And the final just completed: Princeton 45, Buchanan F, Upshur 43. Now in Class A competition tomorrow in the afternoon, Wharton Madonna plays Hart. At night, St. Francis High School of Morgantown plays Peterstown. We'll be on the air at 12:45 tomorrow afternoon over many of these same stations with Wharton Madonna and Hart. And that will be followed at approximately 3.15 over many of these same stations. The AAA matchup in the semifinals, St. Albans against Huntington. Gentlemen, I believe that wraps it up. The WBU Coliseum, Fred Persinger at the controls. Rod Odell sitting out of control. Out of control. <laughs> and Jack Fleming wishing you all a very pleasant good evening. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon.